good everybody it's your girl cherry and welcome back to life of cherry if this is the first time you're seeing this face and hearing this voice do yourself a favor boo and hit that subscribe button now okay turn on your post notifications and give this video a thumbs up if you are a returning subby if you are a returning family member hello how you doing welcome back okay you guys so i have a very very exciting video for you you asked and i am delivering i am answering the top 10 most asked questions about low income how to save and things like that and also your questions about cash stuffing um envelope stuffing whatever you call it so i had a video a while ago that i mentioned I'm getting a lot of questions and I'd rather just do one video answering all your questions and just refer you to this video. I picked the top 10 most asked questions and ta-da, I am here to deliver for you, okay? So I'm not even going to waste your time. We're going to get right into it. I have a notebook right here so you might catch me looking down. <laughs> you might catch me looking down um, a little bit but that's just to look over my notes because you know your girl is a chatty patty and I can get off track. Before we get into the video though, really quickly, if you see anything that I am wearing and you like, boo, that is cute. Check out all my links down below so you can check out my accessories line and anything else your girl got going on. Check that description box, okay? So let me just put this disclaimer out there. I am not a financial expert, planner, advisor, a financial wop bop loo bop, anything that's dealing with being in the financial industry. It is not me. It is not I, okay? Please take what I say, but still make sure that you are doing your own research and coming to your own conclusions about what works works best for you and your budget. So question number one is how can I save money with a low income job? Now these questions are not in any particular order, but this is my most asked question you guys. How can you save money with a low income job? And my notebook just flipped over. Okay, so for me the way I started saving money when I had a low income job, you know, my finances wasn't right, I was struggling, is I started by saving 10% of my income. You pick a number that works best for you and just be consistent with saving that amount. It can be every week, if you get paid every week, you save that amount. It could be bi-weekly, it could be monthly. However you break it down, I think you should just start saving a percentage of your money. One thing I did when I started saving was treat myself like a bill. You're not going to intentionally not pay your light bill. You're not going to intentionally not pay your rent bill. Just be like, oh, whatever happens, happens. No, you're going to be diligent and you're going to make sure that certain bills are getting paid every month when they're supposed to get paid. So treat yourself like a bill and make sure every month you're paying yourself a certain amount. And that amount you just put towards saving. Start out with 10%. If you, let's say you make um, $500, okay? And you're saving 10% of your $500. Then that will only be $50 that you are putting aside from that $500. As your funds become more available, as your income increases, as you pick up your side hustle boo or whatever the case may be, um, then you can increase it from 10% to 15% to 20%, however much you choose to, you know, do for your budget. The second thing that you can do to help save with a low income, I just mentioned it, is get your side hustles up, boo. Get them up. I have a side hustle for 2020 video up here. I will leave it linked. I have a 2021 video coming out very soon, so be on the lookout for that. The side hustles that I mentioned, that I tell you guys about, I share with you guys, um, I have done them personally, or I know people who have done them, so it takes a while for me to get together a list because I'm not just shouting out stuff for you to do. Do this, do that, do that, do that. No, I'm telling you, boo, I did it, it worked, so I'm gonna share that with you. So be on the lookout for that side hustles video. So the second question, you guys, is what is my recommendation for creating a realistic sinking fund for goals and achievements? Okay, so let me just start out by saying that everyone is going to have different sinking funds. Everyone's budget is going to look different. Everyone has different bills they have to pay. If you do have debt or anything like that, everyone's finances are going to look different. So what may work for one person may not work for you. I can come on here and say, 
do this, do that, do that. And then you're like, but wait a minute, I can't even afford to. Or, you know, that's not challenging enough for me. So just know that whatever information or advice that you get from watching videos, doing research, you have to customize it to your own budget. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Dave Ramsey, but he has a guide to help you achieve some of your financial goals and clear up your debt and save money and things of that nature. One of the things that Dave Ramsey suggests is that you have a thousand dollar emergency fund as a starter, meaning that when you start saving, your goal should be to hit a thousand dollars. That should not be your end goal though. So once you hit that thousand dollar mark, on your emergency fund, then you can increase it and just keep adding it. My advice to you is to start with an attainable goal. Once you hit that mark, then just keep increasing it higher and higher until you get to the ultimate goal of your sinking funds and your savings that you wanna be at. Okay, you guys, so question number three is, what made me decide to start a YouTube channel? Okay, so, you know, <laughs> hi, this is Cherry. Your girl is as honest as a person can be, you guys. And what made me start a YouTube channel? My therapist, absolutely. Um, it is okay to not be okay. It is okay to want to reach out and speak to somebody. It is okay to have a neutral party to come in and help you work through some of your issues. So my therapist suggested that I need to find something for me, something that I enjoy, something that I like doing, and it just so happened to be YouTube. I started out with YouTube. I was not doing financial videos, and it kind of transformed into where it's at now, and I'm so happy that you know my YouTube channel is growing and it is what it is because I'm serious about getting my finances in order and getting my life together you know I am a mom the last thing I want to do is pass down my lack of knowledge about finances to my child I want to break that that generational cycle of just not knowing what to do with your money how to clean up your finances and so on for it so yeah I started a YouTube channel for my therapist Thank you, and I'm here now because of you. Okay, you guys, so the fourth question is, how do you stay motivated to budget? Okay, yeah, this is a, a cool question because when I first started to budget, or when I first started saving, it was fun and exciting when I began, but after a while, it's like, okay, yeah, I already saved all my change. Like, I wanted to increase the amount that I was saving, but I wanted to do it in a way to assure that I would keep up with it and continue to save. So how do I stay motivated to save? First and foremost, always remember where I came from. The struggle was real, you guys. It is no secret. I, you know, proudly speak about my past because my past has led me to this point in my life. But your girl was broke. A bottom line so never wanting to be back in that position is the first thing as soon as I think about how it was I'm like oh no let me save a little extra because we we never get it back to there so that definitely helps me to stay motivated the second thing I do is I continue to educate myself you guys knowledge has no expiration date so please just continue to do your research and educate yourself whether it's about finances whether if you want to learn how to build a house from the ground up Whatever it is that your heart desires, like your mind can obtain the information. Just do your research. The third thing that I do to help me stay motivated to save is surround myself with like-minded people. And having this YouTube channel has allowed me to do that. You guys, just because you're on a certain journey in your life doesn't mean that the person next to you is going to be on that same journey, is going to understand the journey that you're on, and is going to be supportive of your journey. So whatever you're trying to do and achieve in life, surround yourself with people who are trying to do and achieve the same thing that you're trying to do. So interacting with you guys, watching some other saving videos and things like that allows me to A, hold myself accountable for what I am doing because I'm not just going to come up here and just, you know, like have diarrhea at a mouth and say whatever. So it holds me accountable and then it also allows me to, you know, like motivate me and you motivate me, I motivate you. So yeah, definitely YouTube plays a big part in me staying motivated to do what I need to do. 
Another thing that I do to stay motivated is to switch up the ways that I save. This is where saving challenges come in handy, you guys. There's so many different saving challenges that you can do. You can make up your own. You can flip it, whatever, however you choose to do it. But that definitely helps me stay motivated. Cute trackers, um, you know, just different things to make it fun and, and fun. <laughs> Guys, remember that it takes 21 days to create a habit. So if you are just starting out in your financial journey, if you are just starting out saving, um, stuffing envelopes, whatever you're doing, give it 21 days before you say, nope, this is not for me. Nope, this, that, and a third. Okay, you guys, so the fifth question is, what motivated you to start saving? Basically, your girl was broke. I didn't have... The finances in my account that I needed to take care of myself, to take care of my child. You know, I went through a very, very rough patch in life. And what doesn't kill you make you stronger. Bottom line. And if I'm still here, okay, your girl is still here checking in every week, rambling, chatting, and all of those good things. So it didn't kill me. It made me stronger. I wanted to put myself in a position where... I didn't have to depend on anybody else to provide for my child or myself. I wanted to put myself in a position where I learned about money and finances. I wanted to put myself in a position to be able to put my child in a position when she gets older to make smart financial decisions. I stand before you today as that as that is my testimony, you guys. No matter what you're going through, no matter how hard life may seem, no matter how dark it may be in that tunnel, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a rainbow after the rain. If you need someone standing here before you to tell you it gets better, boo, ta-da, it gets better. Okay, so yeah, I kind of got a little off track, but that is what motivated me to want to start saving. Okay, you guys, so number six is, do you set a savings goal for yourself? Um, do I have savings goals right now? For 2021, my biggest goal is to end this year debt-free and also to just bulk up my cash envelopes and things of that nature. So 2020 was kind of me, you know, getting my feet wet, starting to figure things out and understand what needed to be done. And 2021 is just like, okay, I planted the seeds, now let's water them and, and watch it grow. I say this all the time about money, every penny counts, and trust me, if you are saving, then you can watch your money grow. So yeah, those are my financial goals this year. As I cross those off the list, then I can continue to add new goals and so on for it. Question number seven is, do you take money out, then put it back in the bank, trying to understand how the whole cash envelope system works? There are multiple ways that you can save your money. For me, using the cash system has worked the best because it's something different versus just swiping a card and having physical money in your hand and seeing, okay, I'm spending $5. Okay, I spent $20. When I have a card, I just swipe and it's almost like there's no price for anything. It's like, oh, I need that swipe. I need that swipe. But if I budget myself by putting a certain amount of money in my envelopes for the week or for every two weeks, then I know, okay, I have $50 here. So let me, you know, distribute it evenly amongst things that I need to get or let me not get this this week and so on for it. So how the cash system works, you guys. I, this is what I do. I don't know about anyone else. Me, I get paid bi-weekly, so I do it twice a month. Nothing more, nothing less. So that means twice a month, I am making withdrawals from the bank, and twice a month, I am making deposits to the bank. So how it works is I break down my money prior to going to the bank, so the teller knows exactly how much I need, and she gives me the correct um, bill denomination so I can, you know, distribute my money in my envelopes. And what I do the day that I go to withdraw my money any money that I have to deposit from my envelopes, I take it that same day. If I am purchasing something online and I swipe it with my card, then what I'll do is take the money from my envelopes that, you know, the same amount that I swiped and put it to the side. When I go to the bank to withdraw my money, that money that I put to the side, I am deposited, depositing it back into my account. So I am making two trips a month. I take money out. The same time I'm taking money out, if I end up swiping my card, I'm redepositing that money into the bank. 
and and that's it that is very easy very simple for me some of you guys don't feel safe with having so much cash um, on hand or in your home so you can definitely do this method with just your accounts online you can move money from one account to another account and so on for it I do this with my bills that basically are reoccurring and never change like my rent my cell phone bill and so on for it I do the the cash system in my bank account it's, it's not cash this because it's in your bank account but you you get what I'm trying to say I think that using the cash system it just allows you to be more aware of what you're spending your money on and it also has helped me save so much money because you realize okay I'm jotting down what I'm spending my money on everything I'm buying and then you realize wait a minute I didn't really need this this or this or you know I could have saved twenty dollars if I would have not in the purchase in this so it has definitely helped me I would suggest that everyone tries it out but I understand what works for one may not work for another so just find and do what works best stay with me for you and your budget hey you guys so question number eight is am I going to do the kids challenge for my daughter this is why I love YouTube you know this is why I love you guys I don't know what the kids challenge is so somebody in the comments below, let me know what the kids challenge is and maybe I will do it for my daughter, you know, or even if I don't do it for my daughter, maybe that's information that I can share with you guys and one of you want to do it for your child, your your grandchildren or whatever. So let me know what the kids challenge is and maybe I will do it. Okay, you guys, question number nine is why do you cash stuff? Who doesn't like to count money? Sometimes legit out stuff my envelopes and then I'll sit there and I'll just recount all my envelopes. It just feels so good. Ch, 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 ch. Money leaving your fingers and you know it's yours, boo. Doing the cash stuffing system has allowed me to tighten up my loose spending habits. It's one thing, like I mentioned before, to swipe a card and it's completely different to have physical money in your hand and to see it leaving. Then you're like, hold on, boo. I, come back. I don't want to spend you. So it, it has definitely helped me. And the temp question is how many streams of income do you have? You guys, I've been waiting. Come close. Come a little closer. Stay tuned because I will be doing a video answering that question and telling you the five streams of income I have. So yeah, I want to do a video in its entirety on that. So be on the lookout for the five streams of income I have. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and turn on your post notifications. If you have any questions that have not been answered in this video, leave them down below and I will do my best to answer your questions. As always, talk to me in the comments because your girl talks back. I thank you all for rocking with me, for tuning in, and so on for it. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.